In this video, we will run our first deep learning application. We're going to run the classic MNIST example in the Jupyter Notebook in Hopsworks. So the first thing we need to do is log into Hopsworks. We're going to do that with the default password, admin. And when we log into the landing page, we'll notice a few things on the left hand side. We have something called tours. And I've already run this tour called the deep learning tour. And it created this project over here on the right hand side called demo deep learning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into our project demo deep learning. And I'm going to go straight up and run my Jupyter notebook. To do that, I need to click on the Jupyter option in the top left hand corner. We can note at this point in the bottom left that there is an available GPU. So hopefully we'll get to use that. And let's go into the Jupyter option here. So the Jupyter option, you can see there's no Jupyter notebook yet because we need to click on the start button to start our notebook server. But before we do that, we have a number of ways of starting our notebook server. We need to give it resources. So in this case, it's going to be a PySpark application that starts. So we can see that PySpark applications have something called a driver. And the driver launches a lot of executors. In this case, we're only going to have one executor. And the executor will have four gigabytes of memory. That's fine. Driver will have two gigabytes. And we'll have one GPU, which will go inside this executor over here. So let's press Start. Now, this will launch your Jupyter Notebook server in a new tab. You may have to approve this if you haven't launched a new tab and approved it before for this particular domain. Now I'm going to launch my experiment. I'm going to pick the experiment folder where we have a bunch of notebooks. And let's go in there. And we can see that there's three options, Keras, Fine Torch, TensorFlow. I'm going to TensorFlow, and I'm going to select this notebook called Maggie MNIST. So the Maggie MNIST example is a, a, a new, relatively new framework that we've introduced. And what it does is it gives good support for uh, printing the output of your executor directly into the notebook. Because the executor is running on a remote machine, we needed to do some work to make that uh, visible in the notebook. So the first thing we'll notice is that th we have this train method here. And inside the train method, this is our executor. What we'll see is all the code for training the MNIST example. There's a bunch of hyperparameters here. And these hyperparameters we've hard coded in this example. In the follow up notebook, we'll uh, do some random searching to find better hyperparameters to, f to find more accurate models. Uh, but in this example, we've hard coded the number of epochs, kernel size pool size and, and dropout rate. So let's just look down through the code. It's quite a simple example of MNIST. You may be familiar with MNIST, which is trying to classify handwritten digits from 0 to 9. There's 10 different classes. And this particular example, we have a convolutional neural network. Here we're defining Keras, sequential layers. And if we go further down, we'll see we get to the end of this particular cell. So now we have, this is our executor cell up here at the top, and we have our driver cell down here at the bottom. And the driver cell we'll call the executor cell. So what I'll do first of all is I will run the executor cell. <coughs> now when I clicked on that, what it did was it said starting Spark application here. So this is a PySpark application, and you'll notice that also in the top right hand corner, that it's not a Python kernel, it's a PySpark kernel for this Jupyter Notebook. Now, the Spark application takes about 15, 20 seconds to start. But once it's started, we'll be able to, to execute this particular line at the bottom, experiment.log on train. So train is the name of the function that we want to launch. And that was the name of, of our training function up here. We can see that that's started now. That's this training function up here. And when we run the second cell, this is our driver that's going to launch the training application. What will happen is that we see we've got some user interface appearing here. We've got this thing called Maggie Experiment with the, the toolbar. And it will start printing out the logs. So we can see we've got print statements up here. Well, they will come out down here. And the zero that you can see on the left-hand side is just the executor identity. Because if you're running lots of executors, you want to know where the logs are coming from. Because this is a distributed notebook. It's not running on a single host in the cluster. Now, this example has finished training. We're getting test accuracy of 94.95%. Uh, we can see that there. Let's just fix that. 
and now let's go back to hops work so this example is finished training and we got 94 and a half percent accuracy 94.95 percent accuracy and when we go back to Hopsworks, what we can notice here is that on the top right hand corner we can open Jupyter or this Jupyter notebook server that's running in a new tab or we can shut it down and we can also look at our application that's running and in the bottom left hand corner we can see that there is a, an allocated GPU so let's click on the application here the blue button for our application to open the application UI what we can notice at the top is that we have spark yarn this is kibana to get the real-time logs and also grafana to look at metrics of the application as it's running now we're going to look at the executors uh, option within the spark ui because we can go directly to the executors and driver and get their logs from the containers they're running on if we want so let's click on the executors option and in here we can see that we have a driver down here and we have an executor but we'll notice that this executor is now dead and if you look over to the left hand side here we can see that the GPU is now available so what actually happened there was that because we're running PySpark we're using a feature called dynamic executors when that executor is not active so our training function completed 60 seconds ago that GPU and the resources for that executor are freed up again so the notebook is still alive we can go back to the notebook and we can you know still print out something to the screen and uh, that's our driver in PySpark is still alive but when we want to train again or or do some visualizations we can keep going in the same notebook without hogging all the GPUs uh, what we can notice also if we look at the logs for our executor is that we can see standard out from Keras gets printed here now in this case we didn't get standard output in the notebook because we only get the print statements that we include ourselves uh, in the notebook and that wasn't available to us within Keras um, but it, you can go in here and get more logs if you so choose other logs are available in here in, in Kibana you can see real-time logs and filter them and you can do visualizations based on logs that are produced and then we have the yarn UI and then we also have Grafana which will show us metrics of the spark job that we ran now um, that's it for this particular example so on follow-on videos we'll look at hyperparameter tuning and use of tensorboard